we are called to awaken our faith in our God. It is then we will know that our God is the Lord. The Lord of the universe, the Lord of our lives. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Hello and welcome to Devya Vachan, the Sunday Scripture Reflection Series. We have Reverend Father Tony Lopez bringing the good news to us. This episode is a reflection for the fifth Sunday of Lent. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather. It is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad. I was not there so that you may believe but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called a twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came, where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, 
Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Peace be with you all. We have journeyed through the season of Lent, and today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. The next Sunday will be the Palm Sunday, or better, the Passion Sunday. This will lead us to the Holy Week, the central event of the Paschal Mystery, the suffering, death and resurrection of Jesus. In today's scripture, we are called to awaken our faith in our God. It is then we will know that our God is the Lord, the Lord of the universe, the Lord of our lives. Yes, Jesus, our Lord and our God. He is the Lord over our brokenness, over the storms of our life, the Lord over death. Today's first reading is from the book of Ezekiel. The prophet Ezekiel lived among the people of Israel who were taken as captives to Babylon, away from their homeland. The people of Israel found themselves as an enslaved people in a foreign land. Their temple destroyed, their land wasted. They were on the brink of despair, a people as good as dead. At this juncture, Ezekiel had a vision wherein he saw a valley full of human dry bones. Ezekiel hears Yahweh questioning him. Can these dry bones come back to life again? The obvious answer would have been, no, never. Yet, the prophet expressing his faith in God replied, You know it best, Lord Yahweh. And astonishingly, they come back to life, the dry bones. This is the backdrop of today's first reading. The vision of Ezekiel depicts that no human power could do what Yahweh would carry out for the people of Israel. The people of Israel, their situation in exile, resembled the condition of those dried up bones. Yahweh promises Israel through Ezekiel that they, despite 
being a broken people, caught up in mighty storms of their lives, through the power of God, would be freed from slavery and would return to their homeland. No human effort could attain it. It is Yahweh, the wonder worker, who will open their graves, who will liberate and infuse new life in them and will return them to their homeland. For Yahweh is their Lord, the Lord over their brokenness, the Lord over the mighty storms of their lives. In today's first reading, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 13, we read, And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. I will place you in your own land, and you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. When I am in brokenness, caught in the storms of life, and everything seems to be lost, I am called to believe that Jesus is the Lord, the Lord over my brokenness, over the storms of my life. He will lead me to running streams, refreshing me with the newness of love and peace. The second reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 10 reads, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. Here, there is a concept of dying, but it is, as Dr. Wayne Dyer says, dying while you are still alive. Thus, one is called to die to sin or evil in oneself and rise to the newness of the life in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Let us ask for this grace in this Lenten season. And in today's Gospel reading of St. John, we have the story of raising Lazarus from the dead. Yes, a lot of us have fears. Fears of public speaking, of spiders, of going in the dark places, and so on. But the greatest fear we all have is the fear of death. We have the fear of death because we feel it's over, it's finished, it is the end. We do not know what happens after death. But what if I told you I know a person who has authority over death? over the grave, a person who can bring life in human beings from their total brokenness, from their death and from their decay. Hey, yes, I do know he is Jesus. Hey, yes, I do know he is Jesus. He has taken victory over death. He is the Lord over death. Khalil Gibran, speaking about the river entering the ocean, says, The river trembles in fear as in front of her she sees a vast ocean. That to enter into this ocean the river feels it will disappear forever. But there is no other way for the river. The river can't go back. Nobody can go back.
to go to go back is impossible in existence the river needs to take the risk of entering the ocean because only then will the fear disappear because that's where the river will know it's not about disappearing into the ocean but of becoming the ocean so the river knows it is not about disappearing into the ocean but becoming the ocean yes our faith in jesus assures us that death is not the end but the beginning of eternal life death is not disappearing into nothingness but appearing before god and entering into eternity aaron and roberta wilbon had the story of raising of lazarus from the dead written in the lyrics of their song he is 4 days late the lyrics goes as follows the news came to jesus please come fast lazarus is sick and without your help he will not last mary and martha watch their brother die they waited for jesus he did not come and they wondered why the death watch was over buried for days somebody said he'll soon be here the lords on the way mara martha ran to him and then she cried lord if you had been here you would have healed him he'd still be alive jesus said to martha show me the grave but she said lord you don't understand he's been there for days the gravestone was rolled back then jesus cried lazarus come forth then somebody said he's alive he's alive yes when he's four days late and all hope is gone lord we don't understand why you waited so long but his way is god's way not yours or mine and isn't it great when he is 4 days late he is still on time he is still on time god it's great when you are 4 days late he is still on time you may be fighting a battle of fear you cry to the lord i need you now but he has not appeared friend do not be discouraged cause he is still the same he'll soon be here he'll roll back the stone and he'll call out your name call out your name but what have i to do let me surrender myself into the hands of jesus who calls out my name when i fight the battle of fear fear of my brokenness fear of my mighty storms of my life and above all fear of death for he is the lord over my brokenness over the storms of my life and above all over my death jesus in god's ways not yours or mine will roll the stone of my brokenness of the mighty storms of my life and of death and jesus 
though he is four days late, he is still be on time to bring healing to my brokenness, calmness to the mighty storms of my life, and above all, eternal life in death. Praise and glory to our God, our Lord. Amen. The news came to Jesus Please come fast Lazarus is sick And without your help He will not last Mary and Martha Watch their brother die They waited for Jesus, he did not come, and they wondered why. The death watch was over, buried for days. Somebody said, he'll soon be here, the Lord's on his way. He'd still be alive But you're four days late And all hope is gone Lord, we don't understand Why you've waited so long But His way is God's way not yours or mine And isn't it great When he's four days late He's still on time Jesus said, Martha Show me the grave But she said, Lord You don't understand He's been there Four days The gravestone was rolled back Then Jesus cried Lazarus come forth And somebody said He's alive, he's alive You've cried to the Lord, I need you now, but he has not appeared. Friend, don't be discouraged, he's still the same. He'll soon be here, he'll roll back the stone. Join me next Friday at 6 p.m. to experience the goodness of God.